If you're just starting to sell on the Amazon FBA platform, then chances are you're going to make a lot of mistakes along your way. I am no stranger to this. I made some huge mistakes when I was still trying to figure out this whole Amazon FBA thing. And I want to tell you some of those mistakes that I made so you guys can learn from them. You guys can know the solutions and you guys can completely avoid those pitfalls so you don't lose any money. What's going on guys, Marvin here. So I'm gonna tell you about four big mistakes that I made when I was first starting to sell on the platform. Now you're really gonna to wanna to stay until the end because the fourth mistake, chances are you haven't heard it before and chances are that if you're making this mistake right now, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. So just make sure you stay until the end so you guys can learn what that is. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first big mistake that I made was lack of product research, lack of knowledge, lack of really caring about product research because I was just so eager to send in products to Amazon and start seeing those sales come in. This is an enormous mistake. I think one of the biggest reasons why people lose money in this business is because they don't take their time on product research or even learning product research properly. So the big mistake that I was making was that when it came to product research and evaluating a product, whether I wanted to invest in it or not, was that I was just taking everything at face value. What is it currently selling at? What has it been selling at for the last couple of days, maybe the last week? And then if it was profitable, which a lot of times it was because the price was inflated, then I would buy it and I would send it in to Amazon. Now, obviously, if you have been selling on Amazon for any length of time, you know what a big mistake this is. So what you want to do when it comes to product research is you want to evaluate what the data is for an extensive period of time, ideally a year. But if you have three months or six months, whatever you have to work with, then make the decision off of that. The last thing you want to do is what I did. Take everything at face value. Oh, it's currently selling at $50. So I'm going to buy it at this $20 price point and make a bunch of money, right? But if we went back three months, then we would see that on average, this product sells at $25 and I'm actually gonna lose a ton of money, okay? So you really wanna take your time when it comes to product research. There's no rush. Nobody's behind you telling you, buy, buy, buy. Take your time, learn what you're doing, make sure you're not gonna lose money on the send. This is the biggest reason why people lose money, in my opinion, is just a lack of product research knowledge. Take your time. There's no rush. Mistake number two, which is rampant in new sellers, and I made this same exact mistake, is that I was a panic seller and an impatient seller, okay? Same thing. So I would send things in, I would buy, obviously my products from my suppliers, I would send them in, and once they got there, if they weren't selling right away, or if somebody was dropping the price a little bit, I wouldn't give any sort of time frame for maybe I should wait and see if he sells out or maybe I should um, check how many units they have left or anything like that. If they started dropping the price, then I started to freak out because I didn't want to lose my investment. This is so common in new sellers. Um, I'm sure a lot of people watching, if you have been selling for any amount of time, you guys can vouch for what I'm saying. In the beginning, it's stressful because you don't know what this business is. You don't know if it's legit or if you're gonna lose money or if you're gonna make money. So if you start seeing the price go down, you wanna recoup that money as, as fast as possible. Another thing that comes with that is that you just wanna win the buy box regardless of the price. Some people will tank the price so far down that it's, you're just like, there's no way you're making money. There's no way you're making money. You're losing money at that price. It just, it just doesn't make sense. The numbers don't add up. Um, but people freak out and they panic sell and then they just start dragging that price to the bottom. And that's when those races to the bottom begin. So panic seller, impatient seller, don't make that mistake. I know it can be stressful when you're first sending your, your initial shipment in. You don't want to lose any money. You don't really know what's going on. Take your time, evaluate what's really going on. If the price tanks, then just wait it out a little bit. You always wanna wait a little bit to see if that person's gonna jump back up in price or if they're gonna sell out and then you can sell it at the higher price point. All right, now mistake number three is that I didn't have laser focus in one method of selling. Now I'm not saying you can't sell in all of these different methods, but in the beginning, I don't think that's the best idea. I think in the beginning when you're first starting out, you really want to laser in on one selling method, whether that's arbitrage, retail or online, or wholesale or private label, or if you're trying to drop ship on Amazon, whatever it may be, you want to laser in on one method of selling first. 
once you gain some experience, once you've been selling on the platform for some time, you can do whatever you want because now you know what you're doing. But if you're trying to do arbitrage, then you're trying to work with wholesale suppliers, then you're trying to work with manufacturers in China because you're trying to do all of them, It's it, you're just spread too thin. It's not gonna work out. Take your time to learn one, and then move on to the other ones. I have tons of different students who started and grew a retail arbitrage business, then transitioned to wholesale with my help with my course. Same thing on the private label end. Tons of people who have tried private label, then they came and transitioned to wholesale. You don't have to stick to one, and if it's not working out, it's just not for you, then move on to a different model that may be for you. There's a lot of different ways to sell on the platform, but again, you wanna focus on one in the beginning. All right, now mistake number four, which I think led to me leaving a lot of money on the table, was that I was only focused on fast selling products. Products that were selling hundreds, thousands a month, that's all I was interested in. I wasn't interested in the products that were selling 10 a month, 20 a month, 30 a month, 50 a month, none of those piqued my interest. On my filters with my scanning software, I would cut them off if they were too low. I wouldn't even look at those products. And I think that's a huge, huge mistake. You wanna sell fast products, but you also wanna sell these slower moving products that have higher profit margins. Have a balance of both. Don't just rely on the fast selling because it's gonna be slimmer margins and don't just rely on the slow selling products. You wanna sell a balance of both, at least that's what I do. So if a product is selling much slower, and when I mean much slower, it's like less than 50, even down to 10 units a month, but the profit is incredibly high, then it's worth it. The slower the product is selling, the profit has to be higher in order for me to wanna jump in on that product. Now, I know this is very common in new sellers, and this was something that I was so focused on. I just wanna sell fast moving products, but you can see why it leaves money on the table. So if you're selling a product that's selling really fast, but you're making, let's say $2 or $3 a unit, but then you have this other product that maybe is only selling 20 times a month, but it's making $15 profit, you know, your margins are much higher, it makes sense to buy that product even though it's selling very few units. But you don't wanna just focus on the fast selling products because that's what I did. Typically, if a product is moving incredibly fast, chances are those margins are gonna be a little bit slimmer. So you just wanna have a balance of both. This was a big mistake that I made in the beginning and I think it led to me leaving so much money on the table. But those are four of the biggest mistakes that I made when I was first starting out. I wanted to really share this video with you guys so that you guys wouldn't commit the same mistakes that I did, not lose any money or leave any money on the table. So if you guys like this video, I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow and it helps these videos reach more people. Also subscribe if you guys like my content and turn on your post notifications so you guys don't miss any of my future uploads. Now, if you guys want to know about ungating on Amazon and how big of an advantage this can give you over new sellers, then you're Going to want to watch the video on the screen where I cover everything that you're going to need to know from brand ungating to category ungating and different pro tips that you guys can implement to get ungated on your first try. So click that video on the screen and I will see you guys in that next one.